live I can live with that I won't die at least I won't die if I do that I probably won't die if I get below that anyways but I might there's a chance that it'll kill me so you could sum those up but again it won't be exact because because uh, it's the area so we can be more exact like this we can write this a couple different ways p of x I like is 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 so now you have x is greater than or equal to 70 and less than or equal to 80. I kind of like writing it this way, which is probably not the most efficient way because I like to have the x on the left. So x is greater than or equal to 75 and less than or equal to the 90. But in any case, the formula would look like this. It's a bit uglier because we have to use that cumulative thing as we saw in the Poisson distributions. We want to take the cumulative on the high side. So if I look at my picture over here, and the pictures are nice to use, we're going to show how to make these in Excel. So if I'm if I'm trying to find, uh, you know, the the if I'm trying to find like this side, then I could take the whole thing. I could take the whole thing minus. So if I'm trying to find the blue area, I could take the whole thing minus the cumulative minus the orange area will give us the the blue area 100 percent minus the orange area if i'm trying to find something in the middle then i can take the cumulative up to the top point and then take the cumulative up to would be would be the bottom point and you would be left with the middle right and so that's what we would do here so so that's what this formula is doing norm dot dist of the higher x the 90 the mean standard deviation it needs to be cumulative that's what the one is minus the norm dot dist of the lower bit the 75 will give us the bit in the middle 42.93 percent remembering this does not mean that we're talking about you're going to get a 43 percent on the test it means you have a the of all the people taking the tests we expect around 43 percent to have scores between 75 and 90. So, or equal to including 75 and 90. We could do that with the Z scores as well. So if I was to calculate the 75 Z score, so I can say, I could say, okay, what are we doing with the Z scores? The Z score, if I'm talking uh, the 75, 75 minus the, minus the 74, minus 74.94, that's the distance from the middle point divided by the standard deviation 10 10.09 is going to give us that uh that point uh oh oh that didn't it didn't work it's 75 i think i said 70 75 minus 74.92 divided by 10.09 gives us that uh, around 0 0.008 if I move the decimal two places over and this z-score is 90 minus the 74.92 divided by the standard deviation of 10.09 and that gives us the 1.494 so I can do the same concept but instead of using x's now using the z's which would be norm.s.dist, then all I need is the z because I already have kind of the x, uh, I'm sorry, the mean and the standard deviation, the x, the mean, the standard, are all compacted into that z. Cumulative, that's for the higher bit, the 1.494 minus the norm.s.dist for the lower uh, z. And that'll give us the same 42.93, the part in the middle. So there's our, there's our Z's, and we can actually plot this over here. So if we want to make our graph, notice that I made these with bar graphs, and this is an actual area graph now. So we did this with the area, and then the question is, well, how can I draw these graphs, which is quite useful, especially if you're like me, and you're really not good at drawing these graphs. This kind of really hold, held me back learning math in school because... I would get all messed up on how many numbers should be on the X and the Y. And then, and so uh, if you can make these in Excel, then it's great, but it's still a little bit complicated to do. So this, so we do this in Excel. So you can, you can uh, plot this out. We're doing this with an if logical test. So if uh, we're saying that if this X here 
if this x is uh, greater, so we're, right here we're looking for less than or equal to 90, uh, x is greater than or equal to 90. So we're taking this x and we're saying if it is less than or equal to, uh, I believe the 90 is what we're picking up in our formula over here. And we'll do this, I highly recommend taking a look at it in Excel if you're uh, interested in this, there's the 90. And then we're saying that uh, if that is true, then we want you to give me the result, which is this P of X. And if it's not true, we want you to just give me a blank cell, which is represented by the double quotes, because whenever you have text, it's with the quotes. So you can see it's got stuff in it up to here, which stops at the 90, and now you have blank stuff. So if I graph this on top of my other chart here, then that's where that's where we get this line, which gives us that, that nice representation so we can try to understand a little bit more pictorially what is happening. Notice that this graph is really pretty neat as well in that we also put the X's here as well as the Z scores down here. So now we can look at two uh, X axes because remember that we talked about the idea that we can represent a lot of this stuff in terms of talking about it in X's, uh, which are the grades, right? And talking about it in the Z scores, which is the distance from that middle point. So we can actually put two of these in here, which is a little fancy tricky thing to do in Excel. So you wanna check that out in Excel so you can, you can utilize that tool as well. Also note that you might be able to get away with like one of these graphs, because remember there's there's basically three questions we ask oftentimes. There's more than three, but one, one of the common ones would be, what is above? So we asked, what is everything above a certain point, like the 90? So that would be the area of the blue side. And then we ask, well, what's everything below a certain thing? And notice that if, if you use one graph, you can kind of ask both those questions, because if I'm asking, what is above a certain point, that's the blue side, that also means that because it adds up to 100%, the orange represents the question of what if something is summed up up to and including everything below a certain point. And then the next question often asked is the one that's in the middle. And that's the one you can't, you might have to do a little bit more fancy graph. So we have a whole bunch of different ways that we can make these graphs that we'll, we'll demonstrate uh, in Excel and try to explain them a little bit here in the OneNotes. Also note with this graph, we when we graphed this, this is the actual bell curve in a bar chart in our actual data. This is the this is the bell curve in the actual data. And when we graph those, we graph this one on top of the uh, percent of total column to get this one. So those are the that's the general idea. Again, I highly recommend checking this stuff out uh, in Excel.